Hi everyone. Today I plan to take you through another important marine notice. And this has also come out uh, late last year in 2018 and early 2019. And uh, this marine notice is very important. I'll tell you the reason why, because uh, it followed an incident uh, uh, on a vessel because of which this marine notice was released. So today's marine notice is very important for you guys who are going for oral examinations and uh, knowledge about this uh, marine notice will help you answer any questions related to this area especially if you have been or even if you have not been selling on livestock vessels uh, oral examiners surveyors they like to ask you questions to assess your knowledge about what is happening in other uh, trading uh, ships so if you have been sailing only on tankers or only on container ships, surveyors, especially if you're going for chief mates, orals or senior orals, they expect you to know about what is happening on other ships as well. So this marine notice becomes very important in that regard. Uh, with today's marine notice, I'll also tell you how this marine notice came into being and what was the incident that triggered the release of this marine notice. So the purpose of this marine notice was to basically remind uh, shippers uh, vessel owners, operators, charters, and the masters of uh, specifically uh, livestock carriers. Uh, livestock carriers, of course, if you know, are those ships which carry livestock, that is animals. All right, so they are called livestock carriers. So, and uh, this many notice reminded of the obligations to the shippers and the owners and the masters to provide and use accurate information in the calculation of stability of the vessel all right because like i told you certain recent events uh, clearly identified the serious risk when stability of a vessel is inadequately calculated in particular the potential for a loss of stability and the subsequent risk of capsizing of vessel now if you ask me what was the incident i'll show it to you in the next slide so the incident happened on a ship called the Javan and when uh, the Austrian Maritime Safety Authority or the AMSA uh, revoked the Australian certificate for the carriage of livestock. Uh, it was a, a Panamanian flagged livestock carrier and uh, the vessel's name was motor vessel Javan and uh, the AMSA revoked the Australian certificate because the vessel's approved stability data could not be relied upon when the vessel was loaded. So the vessel was uh, scheduled to depart from Portland on a journey from Australia to Pakistan. Uh, and uh, after the vessel's classification society, which was in my uh, memory, Bureau Veritas, uh, on behalf of the flag state provided their assessment of the ship's stability. However, when the vessel moved from birth, the ship demonstrated a motion that the ship that, that suggested that the ship lacked stability. So the master of the vessel requested the vessel to return back to the berth. So the AMSA's uh, explanation was that this was the only option given the circumstances because they found that it was extremely concerning that the operators were unable to determine the vessel stability in a loaded condition since its recent dry docking and the operator and the classification society seemed unable to provide a plausible explanation for the situation. So AMSA expected the vessel to be subjected to a detailed examination by the operator as well as the classification society and this would include an inclining experiment to fully determine the vessel's condition and why the stability data or the current data could not be relied upon. Now, this incident on uh, motor vessel Jawan actually was the third incident. Uh, it came after two failed attempts uh, for the vessel to depart with livestock on board uh, in the previous month. So because this was a third incident on the ship, uh, the vessel had been actually attempting to leave the port of Portland uh, in Victoria, Australia with 4,300 cattle on board. After the first failed attempt, 380 cattle were discharged or rather unloaded, but again the vessel suffered stability issues. So the full consignment of the cattle had to be subsequently unloaded or discharged, which led to heavy commercial losses. And that is why the marine notice came into being because it was observed that on certain ships, uh, the masters are not doing enough to ensure adequate stability of the vessel 
keeping in mind the safety of the livestock, the safety of life, the safety of the ship, of course. So section 11, uh, one of Marine Order 43 uh, specifically deals with cargo and cargo handling of livestock and uh, it requires the master of a livestock vessel to ensure the vessel complies with the intact stability code and the criteria in the marine order at all stages of the voyage and during loading of the vessel. So if you go online and you find out Marine Order 43, Marine Order 43 is basically uh, cargo and cargo handling in a livestock vessel. And if you go into Schedule 1, which is towards the end of the Marine Order, Schedule 1 will uh, dictates the intact stability criteria together with the GZ diagram and all that. Now, I didn't want to go into that because otherwise this video would become very long. That's a separate topic, uh, but uh, that is provided there. You can find it. It's free online. You can just go and search it up on Google and you can find the marine order online so that is no issue uh, maybe one day i'll take you through that marine orders as well now to ensure the master is provided with the appropriate information to calculate the stability of the vessel marine order 43 also requires the shipper to provide accurate details of the number weight and the kind of livestock that is to be loaded onto a vessel now if the if the shipper fails to do so if the fa shipper fails to provide all this information to the master it is considered an offense. It is considered uh, you have to pay fines or it's punishable offense. Now, also, uh, if you forget about Marine Orders 43, even Safety of Life at Sea Convention or the SOLAS Convention, specifically Chapter 6, also requires the shipper to provide the master with appropriate information on the cargo sufficiently in advance of loading to enable precautions which may be necessary for proper storage and safe carriage of the cargo to be put into effect. So as I have told you before, marine orders are a reflection of these international regulations. Marine orders are a, 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 a regulation that is followed in Australia, but they are a direct reflection of the important conventions, all the key conventions such as SOLAS, MARPOL, ISM, STCW, or Marine Maritime Labor Convention. It's all, it's all a reflection of that. So it doesn't matter where you are sailing, in which part of the world you are sailing, or uh, uh, which is the registry you are sailing, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be on Australian registered ships. This is an international requirement even required by SOLAS. So these requirements are then adopted by the marine orders. So one is for 43, which is dealing with livestock carrier. Then there is also marine order 42, which deals with carriage, storage and securing of cargoes and containers. And uh, compliance means that proper precautions uh, must be followed by a master uh, to include uh, the development of a detailed load plan uh, for the vessel. So a shipper must not provide average livestock weights across the entire load as this does not provide the master with sufficient information to appropriately calculate the vessel stability. Now, because these average kind of or rough or random weights, uh, if there are error in this because of the sheer amount of cattle or livestock involved uh, by the numbers, it adds up. So if they are not accurate numbers and such huge uh, cargo or livestock is involved, Overall, a big error can creep in, which can affect the stability of the vessel. And that is why shippers cannot get away by just providing an average or a rough number. Uh, they have to provide pretty accurate numbers so that the ship can then calculate its stability before loading out. And then these instances where the cattle has to be unloaded or the ship has to come back into the port can be avoided because these are all commercial cost. It costs money to everyone, whether it's the shipper or the ship owner uh, or the port. It costs uh, a, a valuable berth to the port when the uh, vessel comes back and because of the mistake of the master. So all this information provided by the shipper must be sufficient to allow the master to create a detailed deck by deck load plan addressing the type of animal that was loaded, the weight of the animals and the number in order to assess compliance with the intact stability code. Finally, the AMSA also will carry out some preloading inspections. So during these preloading inspections, AMSA surveyors or AMSA inspectors will confirm that the information provided to the master prior to the loading of the livestock enable the master to produce a detailed deck by deck load plan addressing the type of animal the weight and the number of animals as well as a stability calculation that shows the vessel uh, will comply with the relevant stability requirements throughout the entire voyage not only when departing the port but throughout the voyage till it reaches its port of destination 
now of course the first liability is put on the shipper the shipper needs to provide with all the key information relevant and important information and then of course the liability is placed on the ship's master or the ship's officers who are working on the ship's master to be able to use that information and produce the required stability plan deck by deck uh, absolutely accurate so that they can justify that the vessel is stable the vessel has adequate gm to be able to sail out as well as reach the next destination port with all safety so these measures are necessary to accurately calculate the vessel stability so if such information has not been provided or the master cannot produce a plan or calculations then uh, loading of the livestock will be prohibited under this marine orders the vessel will be turned away from the australian port and this will be seriously viewed of course not only by the port authorities but also by your ship owner you may even lose your job as a master or the ship's chief officer especially so make sure that you read up or you understand this marine notice properly um, especially if you have been selling on livestock carriers but like i told you before if you have not been selling on livestock carriers but you are uh, going for oral examination you may be asked this question from the oral examiner or the surveyor because they want to see if your knowledge is only limited to the type of ships you are selling or it also extends and goes beyond the type of ships you are selling and to other ships as well so make sure you read this or you listen to my podcast you note down the important points the key points that you have to mention during the oral examination i'll see you soon with my next video all the best guys keep studying hard and a very happy new year to you bye